Hey folks, welcome to the Social Marketing Academy. I am your host, Christopher Tompkins. It is a fine day today, and it's a fine day to talk about digital marketing. I have my guest today on the Social Marketing Academy is going to be Alex Gold, um, who is going to tell us all about the ins and outs of digital marketing, some social, some website design, some ROI tips and tricks, um, all based on your questions. So I'm excited to let him in and I'll introduce him to you all in just a minute, okay? So if you have been listening to the Social Marketing Academy, Academy or watching our live stream um, on Facebook and YouTube, it's really great to have you back. Again, if you're new to the show, welcome. We go live every Thursday evening and we try to share as much great information as we possibly can. I basically want to cover every single digital marketing topic that is interesting to you, the audience, so you can benefit from my next my network of experts that I work with in my agency life at the Go Agency. If you'd like to learn more about the Go Agency, please visit me online and you can learn all about what we do. It's go salesandmarketing.com. It's go G O salesandmarketing.com. While you're there, there's a free e-course that we just developed. It's a pop-up. Sign up for it, check it out. Some really great information about how to define your social media edge. Then we have our blog as well, which has lots of really great information. All the information we put on the blog is for you to understand concepts that you might feel that you have a little bit of a block with, as well as share late breaking news and trends. So definitely check that out. And then we have our social media links on the top right hand corner. Click any of those or go through the contact form on our website. Ask me any question that you'd like to hear on an upcoming episode of the Social Marketing Academy. Any topic, anything. I have such a great network. I'm so lucky to have this network of really fantastic professionals, much like Alex, who we'll be meeting shortly, who know so much more about things that I don't know so much about. So it's really nice to be able to connect with them and bring them to you as well for almost like a free hour of consultation, which is pretty great um, opportunity, right? So please do. If you haven't subscribed to our show already, please do wherever you listen to your podcasts and you download them. Um, you can check us out on Apple, Overcast, whatever, Stitcher, um, as well as check out our live feed. If you want to see us, if you don't want to see us and you want the mystery, please feel free to only listen to the podcast. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Alex Gold. Um, Alex, he's a, he is the founder and CEO of Del Oro Media. That's D-E-L-O-R-O -O Media. Uh, he's a seasoned veteran in the social media marketing and digital marketing space, and he brings to the table a wealth of strategic and operational insights. Listen to this, okay? He's worked at Nickelodeon on SpongeBob, TMNT, um, Kids Choice Awards, and a whole lot more. And also, he's also been all around the music industry as well. He's worked with um, Fishbone, Alan Eve, Evans Trio, Slightly Stupid, The AgriLikes, Pepper, and Irrita Irritation. Um, erration rather. Um, always driven by the next challenge, Alex founded his company, Del Oro Media, in the summer of 2019. Alex holds a master's degree in strategic public relations from the University of Southern California and a bachelor's, bachelor's degree in business administration from California State University, San Marcos. He is an avid scuba driver, so he does scuba diving musician, cinephile, and potter. He enjoys making original pottery pieces for friends and family. And I got a big shout out for my mug too by Alex just recently, which is from the tree and animal kingdom. So I did not make that. I did not make that. Um, let's let Alex in so we can we can all meet him and get into the questions that you've asked him um, via social media, via our website, and also via just emailing me directly. So I have Alex Gold with me. Alex, welcome. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. I was just showing them the mug and saying that you you were like you you're such a you're such a pottery fan that you were talking about the mug. So I was I was very very excited about that. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I love pottery. So so Alex, um, tell everybody just a little bit about yourself. I've already kind of give them a like kind of like a high level of you, but just just kind of let's introduce yourself just a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I mean, I'm super passionate about all things entertainment and social media. My background is in music and television. Uh, I have a master's uh, from USC and my undergrad from Cal State San Marcos. And I started my company uh, almost two years ago now. And, and I've been uh, been doing uh, working freelance and working with clients on a, on a retainer basis for, for that long and, and building, building my portfolio that way. 
and really trying to stay focused in, in the entertainment space, which I love. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, every day is a new adventure. And, and I love the ability to kind of set my own schedule and work with people that, uh, that I want to work with and, and work on really exciting, interesting projects. So yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting that you said that because I already had a segue. Um, and I was, I was going to say, you know, you've now had your agency for going on two years now. What, how is life different for you now? Like how, as an agency owner, how, how, how was, obviously you make your own schedule, no shit, but what other things kind of, um, have you, do you enjoy about the agency life where you didn't, maybe you didn't expect? Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely, it's definitely a lot harder to go, go at your own coming from uh, Nickelodeon where that you have this, the support of a, a giant corporation and right. Yeah. You know, plus people to help you uh, kind of steer a ship in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, a very different challenge to be lean and mean. And um, uh, I do like the ability to uh, that I have now to kind of bootstrap my way into um anything really and and i can you know kind of be a shoe of i guess a jack of all trades in the sense that i can target the right companies that i'm looking to work with and and you know trying to find a project that makes sense with the you know the team members that we have so um i think yeah. that the differences are stark but also the freedoms are equally uh equally liberating in that sense so yeah no i completely agree with you i think it's one of the things that i after after like my first year i think as an agency owner i discovered that i could actually choose to work on things that i liked because <laughs> at first yeah, right. it's kind of like oh oh yeah this is great yeah the world's my oyster <gasps> oh i have bills okay let's let's get these bills sorted out now <laughs> yeah, exactly. and then you, you end up looking at your roster and it's kind of like it's okay. It's okay. It's it's okay. It's getting right. there. Um, yeah, a little bit surely. Yeah, but then Before when you the find, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, right. And, yeah. and once you get into actually working for clients that um, you really love working with, because it's it's nice. Like you know, looking forward like eleven years later, I'm looking at my roster, and I don't dislike anybody that I'm working with. I'm not working with anybody for a paycheck. Well, right. I kind of am, but I, at the same because I have to stay in business, the business, right? But. Exactly. I enjoy every single one of the campaigns I work on. And it's kind of like finding that match is, is really, really fun rather than having like someone drop a folder on your desk and saying, this is your new project. Get right. started. Yeah, here's the new show we're doing. We don't care if you don't like it. Go. Yeah. <laughs> you need the best ideas you could possibly think of. What you got? No, it's, not, it's not. already been it's already been rated really, really low. No, everyone hates it already in the test audiences. Go. Uh, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the nature of, of television, sadly, but there are some passion projects that I, I would get excited about. And some I did work with some really awesome IP at Nickelodeon and, you know, being working on the SpongeBob accounts and do, making all the Instagram stories for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Kids yeah. Choice Award and everything was a lot of fun. I definitely miss those days. I think I miss the people more than the work. Yeah. Um, and so, and obviously, you know, working remotely these days, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse, right? So you don't really have the hallway conversations that you, uh, that I find to actually be uh, like helpful in a very like kind of in a softer management style of, uh, you know, being able to work problems out uh, almost indirectly yeah. uh, that way. So the, the uh, working remotely definitely put, presents its own interesting challenges as, as well. It does. I was talking in my last episode, um, we were talking PR with Jeff Bell of Bell PR, and he was talking about um, kind of, you know, the same thing. And I said on that one, it's kind of like, and even just like, when you were saying that, it just reminds me of like, I miss being in the conference room with my team with right. a whiteboard on the wall and yeah. everyone's just <laughs> shouting <laughs> ideas. And yeah. That's kind of like, the, I mean, the inner brainstorm sense. I think that those, yeah. when you can like feel each other's energy, but that yeah. kind of around the room i think that those those moments are are definitely what what i would like to get back to for sure yeah it's 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 so it's so odd too because you know you try to you try i try my damnedest to recreate it on a zoom and right. it's hard because everyone now has the zoom etiquette that as soon as they hear another voice they shut up immediately so right. everyone's constantly stifling themselves during uh, the brainstorm meeting insight. yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. but okay self, so self editing almost oh my gosh all the time all the time um yeah. so let's go through some questions that we got um from sure. our audience um 
How, okay, this is a good one for you, um, especially in the digital marketing space. I'm gonna jump around. These aren't in any sort of order. Sure. Um, how can I get people to discover my brand on social media? Okay, I mean, give me an answer to that and I'll write you a check. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's the, the golden goose question, right? Like the million dollar question. Uh, I, the short answer is it really depends. Uh, I mean, it depends on the industry. It depends on your product. Are, are you a product? Are you a service? Are you, you know, are you a show? Like what are you like an intellectual property? Yep. Are you marketing for a specific event? Is it kind of like a long tail sort of, uh, content? Like what is the, what is the end goal? Where's it going to live? What's the strategy behind it? And, uh, so I think that that's definitely the beginning of a lot, a lot larger of a conversation and. But I think that if there's someone that's asking those sorts of questions, then that's that's a good place to be in to to look for support from a from a social media agency standpoint for sure. Mm -hmm. When when you when when people are approaching you and you're in in, in looking for our campaigns, um, is there a certain site that they um, that you've seen people lean towards? Yeah, I mean, I, I think. I definitely love Instagram and, but I think that kind of people discover, I get most of my business through referrals. So mm -hmm. uh, I think kind of people just, however, they, they, they'll look at my website and then they'll reach out to me via that. But it's usually, um, it's usually referral, like word of mouth. I think that's always the best way to build a business and, mm -hmm. um, you know, don't burn any bridges. And, and uh, I think it's important to maintain relationships, you know, throughout your career, throughout your life. And I think that um, yeah, so I would say the, the main uh, way that people find me is through word of mouth and connections. Okay, so. and how about the, um, your prospective clients when they come, they come to you, uh, you know, and you're talking about a social media mix. What's the sure. first site that they bring up when, from their end? Usually if, if there's, they're kind of like an older demo, like, like baby boomers, they'll bring up Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then if they're kind of more, more Gen X or millennial, they'll talk about Instagram and then they'll be like, do we need a Snapchat? Like, should we be on TikTok? And that's always another, uh, another larger question as well. It's like, well, what's your brand? Like, and who are you targeting? Cause those are a lot younger demos on those two platforms. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've seen, uh, I've seen a lot of people start looking for um, additional solutions um, to the Facebook channel, um, right. especially with a lot of the changes that they've been making over the last year. Yeah. Uh, and that's been probably one of the most interesting things I've seen move. Because the yeah. conversation usually is always, no matter who they are, they always start with Facebook as kind of like a linchpin cornerstone. Yep. Unless it's yep. B2B, then it's always going to be LinkedIn, right? <laughs> but um, it's interesting because when people are finding out how to be discovered, it's kind of it's kind of like, well, have you claimed your real estate? What's your story? How can I get to the bottom of what you want to put out there? Um, uh, it's, it's, it's so many different things. Um, now, one, one great way to kind of get people to see your content on social media is to boost it and also through advertising. Yeah. So this is another one that's probably going to be a depends answer, but how much do people need to spend on social media advertising? I mean, in your, in your opinion, or is it not necessary or all the above or... <laughs> oh. I think that if, if there is a paid budget, I think that that can definitely go a long way to, uh, you know, increasing the success, the probability of success of a campaign and uh, really driving the metrics and, and conversions that you're looking for there. Um, I think, oh, I mean, I guess I, it really depends on the scope of the project and like if it's local or if it's global or if it's, you know, like country to country kind of basis. Um, I think that it really depends Mm -hmm. on the scope of the campaign yeah uh, i would say i usually i usually kind of steer away from a paid campaign unless it's like a minimum of like a 2k spend if we had yeah. to throw out a number yeah. just to make it real and tangible anything under that i would say is kind of like you know you'll get a few pings here and there but you may not see the kind of numbers that you're looking for but again that's like this very broad because we're not looking at a specific campaign yeah. at all but uh you know, and that's just, and like, then what's the life of the campaign? Is that over a month? Is that two months? I would say, mm -hmm. you know, you, you gotta try to narrow that down. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because it's one of those things where um, any sort of advertising has to have a hard ROI metric attached to it. So right. it's one of those things where it's, 
I have five thousand dollars. Can we put it into Facebook advertising? Of course you can, and I will take my percentage cut. But at the same time, um, what are you trying to do? And yeah. I think that that's one of the first things I would ask um, when a client comes through. It's kind of like, okay, um, well, what's the, if they if they understand how the social media advertising works in terms of budgeting and things like that? If they're yeah. familiar with media buys, then looking into advertising on social. I like to look back at what their main metrics are they're measuring. So is it signups to an email? Is it hits to website? Is it actual sales conversions? Because yeah. then it's almost like you can work backwards as to what they could expect in terms of a customer acquisition cost. Totally. But, but see, everything I said right there is in the beautiful, like never going to happen box because it's very challenging. It's, yeah. One of the things is uh, when, and this is this is why you hire a firm like um, Alex's or a, a one like mine. It's we have to go and do all the sleuthing because right. there's no there's no hard and fast rule when it comes to spend or to the perfect marketing mix because the perfect marketing mix could be great for January, but for February it's, it's going to tank because something's going to change. Right. Having an agency on your side, you're able to pivot and then have that knowledge base that they can explain things to you. So you can do what you do best and still get all of the information you need to market your business. Right. Precisely. It's a, uh, it's interesting though, because the, the, the advertising spend question always gets knocked around. I'm never, uh, it's, it's always one of those ones where I, it's like, I wish I just had some equation that was that way I could just plug in for everybody. Yeah. Um, but you're yeah. dealing with audiences too. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're building custom audiences, and you know, you're you're targeting a very specific set of people that that based on the client's needs and and what they're looking to uh, achieve. And so, yeah, it's. I would say if there is budget, then then yes, I think it makes a huge difference in terms of being a, a necessary part of your arsenal on social media for sure. Yeah, and I and I I'll, I'll say two additional things on that. I think that number one. Um, you need an advertising budget if you're doing social media, especially if you're doing Facebook, you need to have something there. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, free medium, a rubber lamp. It ain't free, folks. You got to pay for it somehow. You're either paying us to manage it for you or right. you're going to be paying um, Facebook advertising budget to get people to actually look at your stuff. That's yeah. a longer story. Yeah. But um, another thing is if you're calling an agency and you're saying, well, I can just boost these myself, understand that clicking the button that says boost is not all that you have to do to make more people see that. Yeah. There's, there's more metrics that are tied to that and they might make you feel really uncomfortable when you have to get into actually putting those things in because they're gonna ask you really specific questions about your target audience that you may not be able to answer. Right. So just remember clicking the button to boost a post is not the end of the world. It looks real easy. That, that is, it looks really oh, easy. Facebook right? makes it very easy to give, you, give them money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's that's why they're they're as large as they are. It's it's, it's incredible, um, but you know we're playing we're playing the game on their their home turf, you know. So, and that's a good point too. I mean, uh, one of the things that I always try to make very clear with my clients is that I'm not employed by Facebook. I'm utilizing that platform. That's kind of like if we're going to like play a ball game, we're using someone else's field. I'm just playing there. I mean, yeah. I don't own it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just talking it. I'm not the general manager. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm not at fault because Facebook is not going to okay your ad for four days. I'm. I have nothing to do with it. I'm yeah. trying my best. Uh, okay. So, um, I know that web design is something that um, came up again and again. That's something that you guys offer, right? Or no? Uh, I, I, we don't specifically, but I'd be happy to make referrals to anyone that's looking for a web design. Um, I do get that question a lot, uh, and. It's just never something that I specialized in. And, and I think at some point I might hire someone on uh, who does the web design so we right. can have that as a product and service. Um, but right now, no, and that's okay. Which, and I think it's just about, you know, I'm happy to help build other people up too. If there's a campaign that there's a client that, you know, needs some paid social and organic social, but also needs help with a website, you know, right. I can team with someone that, um, that could do a good job for, uh, you know, a really cost-effective rate. Right. The um with with website design uh if someone comes to you and they are really eager for a social media marketing campaign they have a killer product or a killer uh, product whatever it is uh 
and you're you start taking a deep dive onto their online presence and their website is a pos um what do you do that's a good what question yeah well if they already have if they have something like a wordpress or like a wix or something i can hop in there and do some like quick edits or like make some suggestions of them um mm -hmm. I, I try to not go too out of scope in, in those sorts of things if it's something that i can do quickly or when i'm you know in kind of like the discovery phase of of taking on a new client i'll make a like a list of recommendations and like what i can help them achieve and, and what i would also recommend be, that's beyond kind of like the scope of work that you know that we'd be willing to kind of take on um and then also like i said like i can uh make recommendations for uh, cost effective referrals in that situation but um yeah i think that's a good question i mean it's like what's the easiest what's the most effective way to to manage it, that sort of an issue and i, I think that um mm -hmm. they're problem solving it, of course yeah it's hard to make a website it's hard to make a website look good and and drive traffic the way that you want um but i think that retargeting through you know paid advertising is another way to once you have that website set up really get those numbers back and get those emails if you're trying to drive email subscribers mm -hmm. and stuff like that so. yeah and that's a really important factor too um because you know if you're if you're trying to get things off the ground digitally and your house looks like a rusty trailer yeah no one wants and to you're trying to sell a thousand dollar services yeah, exactly. um plus i mean it's it's going to be a challenge right because you have to think about what i always say is what is the curb appeal of your house to your target audience if your target audience rolled up to your curb what does it look like yeah if it doesn't appeal to them you're doing something wrong with how you're designing your site Right. For example, and this could be as basic as a color palette, because I've 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 had clients in the past where we've we've actually haven't taught we I do this quite often though because I think it's very valuable. I will not take on a social media client until their website is correct because they don't need to spend money with me. They need to fix what's most important first. Yeah. Then we can kind of promote that and help them out. That's and good, yeah. they, it's kind of like sometimes if the age is wrong for the targeting, the colors are wrong for maybe it's gender is kind of, it's it, the gender is incorrect. Yeah. Um, and sometimes a deep dive um, with an audit sometimes will just kind of help pop that stuff to the surface when you see that, yeah. okay. So do your Google analytics, 95% um, of your audience is men and you have, a, you're in your whole entire um, website's done in pastels. So <laughs> we're gonna have to go mix that up a little bit. Um, but it, it's a, that one's, that's really important. Also, I think what you said too about retargeting when you're thinking about an advertising budget for social, retargeting is something that you're able to do with every social media site out there. There's a pixel that you can install, which is just code that you throw on your website um, that will help you redirect. What? Yeah, that's another issue that I've encountered with a lot of paid ads that I'm working with clients is they want to send it to a website that's not their own URL so they can't embed the pixel and it's a whole nother thing. Oh yeah. That, so then you can't track conversions and you're like oh man if only we could build a page <laughs> on the website itself so I've, I've worked with clients to help solve oh. those problems as well yeah and that's and that's a common problem too and yeah. this is this is another reason why a lot of companies when they're starting out on this it's really great to partner with an agency to get everything set up properly because mm -hmm. um if it's kind of like ah i can do this in-house you can do this in-house but if I'm not a carpenter, I know I can get a shelf on that wall. Is that right. shelf going to stay? Is yeah. it going to hold anything? I don't know. Proof, you know. Get it up. <laughs> get it up. California. Is there earthquake and fireproof? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's funny, too, because I've been in, by no means am I a website genius. There's people that know everything about websites. I know enough to be dangerous, and I know enough to, I don't want to be working on them. Yeah. Because we don't handle them in-house, either. Yeah. And, um. I've seen so many people's websites that look like a half played game of Jenga. Mm -hmm. Like they, they've done okay. so many things. Like it's a WordPress that has like 14 form plugins for the uh, same thing. And they're all canceling one another out. And, uh, uh, and it's kind of like, all you have to do really is to find someone that's an expert in the, in the area that can help you out. And then things kind of flow a little bit easier, but it's kind of knowing when to stop, I guess, <laughs> in a way. I mean, yeah. I was handling, um, the other day I was looking through and helping um, helping a friend with their uh, their Facebook advertising account. They had three advertising accounts, four pixels. 
for oh one website and all the oh pixels were installed onto the website. They were canceling out that they were giving errors. It was a mess. Oh man, that's a headache. One advertising account, one pixel. That's it, folks. One website. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Not 14 websites and one pixel. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's so funny. Um, so um, in terms of like looking at creative, what's like good creative look like to you from your standpoint? Yeah, I think uh, that's a good question. I think that, I mean, it's social media. So you're, it's all about creating thumb stopping content because everyone's just scrolling on their feeds. and I like that. Mm -hmm. Make someone stop and like, oh, this is interesting. You know, whether it's a sponsored post or uh, some organic content, what is, what is eye popping, eye catching? You know, if, since you only have like one to three seconds to, uh, capture someone's attention uh how do you, uh, do you you sometimes i mean most of the time best practice is to front load your call to action right so you gotta have it be something interesting and and beautiful or or, or uh engaging in that sense but you also have to sell your message of like what you're trying to put out there so uh mm -hmm. have a two two-prong approach in, in that sense and i think just uh yeah good creative it's kind of like one of those things you gotta have an eye for it and mm -hmm. know what Yep. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, digital trends or things that you're seeing kind of really develop faster than others, because 2020 was one of those years where it was, it was, everything was very, very different across the board. It wasn't just different. It was different in every way, shape or form, um, yeah. including uh, people's attitudes to digital and their openness for new ideas. Um, sure. What do you think we're going to see more of? like this year, just from kind of like clients' attitudes, what you're seeing online? Yeah. Um, I think that there, I think that, you know, I think we're still in a, in a bull market. Hopefully that doesn't yeah. change it over the next kind of couple of weeks, but I've definitely seen a willingness to, to bring, you know, a willingness to bring on uh, new ideas and new campaigns and, uh, you know, put, put themselves out there in way, kind of an open-mindedness, I would say. Okay. I think that there's kind of an open-mindedness to, to hopefully continues through 2021 mm -hmm. uh, and kind of a hope for, for new positivity instead of, uh, you know, kind of what most people would decry as a train wreck of 2020. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, I think that there's been a, a willingness to try new ideas and experiment with different forms of content, which is, that's really the bread and butter of social media because yeah everything's always changing and, and new ideas become old ideas rather quickly. And so it's always kind of trying to find the next big thing uh, or the next cool meme concept um, and, and trying to get that to catch on or, or even just piggybacking off of some, you know, staying relevant and, and putting out content like that, if it makes sense for your brand or your IP. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that I'm hoping that people take away from last year um, in the digital marketing arena specifically, is the power of the pivot and the power of being being open to new ideas, like you said, mm -hmm. um, being open to new creative approaches, because uh, things are going to continually change. This is not, basically, this last year set a lot of change in motion that's going to continue. Now, obviously, things hopefully will all get better and things will get more positive. And, um, but with that, people's minds have already slowed down to be able to latch on to new concepts. Hmm. My, 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 my prediction in this space is that things are going to start moving really, 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 really fast in digital marketing and people are going to start, because it's going to start speeding up again. Because yeah. the amount of change that we, has already been predicted in the digital space is kind of like makes your head spin. Um, right just with Facebook alone. Um, I mean, just a few of the things that were, that were alluded to that are going to happen is the iOS change on face uh, on, um, on um, iPhones is going to really mm -hmm. change the targeting of Facebook um, advertising. Sure. The um, also the uh, Facebook um, likes are going to be going away mm -hmm. and it's going to be follows only. Wow. Uh, how are people going to deal with that? Well, yeah. they got to be ready to pivot. And you've got to be ready to not hold on to things and cry about them because yeah. dying on this hill for any sort of social media metric is going to make you a relic really quickly. Let's just, let's just be honest. You <laughs> have to understand that 
I, and when I saw that, the first thing I thought to myself was I had a quiet moment and I was like, how am I going to explain this to 45 people? <laughs> how am I going to explain um, that all of their investment buying those, um, like in, not buying, but advertising for likes and, and trying to get people engaging in their content, it might be for not, depending okay. on how Facebook deals with things. Okay. And yeah, exactly. it, it's just, you just got to be ready to pivot. Like yeah. I, I've, I, I've already started talking to my clients about exploring new, new venues and looking at TikTok and how can yeah. you, how, what does that content generation look like for a brand and how can right. they be comfortable with it? And yeah. I think keeping those dialogues open internally, or even when you're coming up with your campaigns yeah, is really important. Um, I just, I really do feel that it's going to be a, a year of a lot of change online. Absolutely. So uh, it's going to be interesting. I think mid year, I'm going to take a, like a check in and see like take a, a mid roll ad check. Yeah. Just kind of like six month check in. Am I still sane? Uh, Cause uh, one thing that like kind of like lifting the curtain, like in Alex and my world, um, we wake up in the morning and something's changed. That's changed everything that we've set up for campaigns and everything that clients have approved all over again, <laughs> it all over again. And it has nothing, it's basically, it's like if I wanted to go play baseball in the baseball field and they just like paved it. Yeah. <laughs> and like then we're like- the Second base is no longer a base, but you have to run to the edge of the outfield at back for it to count as a second base. You're like, sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, and it's actually, we're gonna do flag football now. <laughs> yeah, baseball game is now, yeah, touch football. So let's talk about ROI a little bit. Um, when clients ask you or prospective clients ask you like, what's the ROI of this going to be? How, how, how do you set their expectations as for what they can expect out of their campaign? No matter, I mean, just think in terms of like social, maybe. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's really about setting expectations of like, what is a realistic outcome for a campaign? And I think that doing enough campaigns to start to really kind of understand like a, what a ballpark is uh, for the kind of like effort and level of content that's being created, if there's paid involved, like, yeah. and then it's about focusing on the right KPIs, you know, obviously reach, impressions, views, conversions, and then also, but that also, the ROI tracks into like, what's their end goal? What are they hoping to achieve? Like, like we mentioned earlier in terms of like, is it email signups? Is it, uh, you know, like product purchases? Is it, you know, video downloads or app downloads or, or listens or streams on Spotify. Um, so I think that it, it really uh, it depends in that situation, but the KPIs are pretty solid in terms of like what to look for. And then based on kind of like the, the level of output being produced uh, and the amount of spend behind any potential paid campaign can kind of determine a ballpark range of, of what uh, is to be expected from that campaign. Absolutely. Um, and it's, it's interesting because I'm sure that you've experienced this as well. When people are, are discussing social media and kind of what their goals are, even if I'm, when I'm doing consulting, I'll ask, I'll say, okay, well, what, what are the goals? And it's kind of like, well, I want to get more exposure and right. I want to get more credibility. And we're, there's almost different sets. I was talking to one of my clients the other day and let's see if you agree with this. Um, we were talking about, um, conversions and we were talking about social media conversions and I believe a social media conversion could be counted as a like an engagement or a share or a comment because you're putting content out and someone is actually going to engage with it so right. that That's engagement a, counts as a conversion engagement. yeah and that would be almost considered as on page conversion if it's on a Facebook page or Instagram or whatever um, and then there's the sales conversion which would be actually selling the product or yeah. going to the website and then putting it in the cart and checking out. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's interesting though. Um, it's one of the things is uh, always paying attention to, um, do you, uh, uh, what would you say to somebody who said that, um, oh, I don't know if I have Google Analytics on my website. What would be the first thing you would say? It, would they would this hypothetical scenario already be a client or is this kind of in the discovery phase of getting set up discovery phase um that's a good question i'd like well i i would say uh i would i would that's a good question i, I think it, it would be a matter of like well that's okay we can get you set up and, mm -hmm. and move forward from there and get everything situated once we get everything on 
on track and kind of I would add that to the scope of work of like getting it set up on Google Analytics or doing some discovery once we're we're signed on to like a project to be able to get their the log information to mm -hmm. try and mm -hmm. get into if they have a Gmail account does that is that Gmail account linked to Google Analytics otherwise build a new one for them um, and then you know put the pixels in the right places and um, use that for their, their campaign so right yeah I, I would say like in, ter in terms of the value um because i'd want to probably tell them kind of like what the value was and i think that when it comes to your websites and unless you have a shopify website because if you do have a shopify website for your business it's it, a lot of that is already contained within sure. um but if you're any other website i mean yeah i would say any other website you should definitely all websites should have a google analytics component yeah um and one of the things that um recently this is kind of just like kind of a rando point um i was looking at the new features of google analytics and now they have almost i don't want to say it's the dummies version because i was drawn to it so i don't know if i'm a dummy or not but <laughs> they have um they have quick view analytics on the right hand side so oh, cool. it actually goes through um all of the different questions so basically it go you can go through behaviors and it says how many people have viewed here and it's like would you like to see who these people are and you click and then it shows you those people and it's like would you like to know what the percentage of the from here i mean it's it's completely intuitive awesome. yeah, really yeah. really interesting and, and folks if you're worried if you do not have google analytics you need it installed on your website stop your life and get it um it's free um and then google's not going to be haunting you if you do it it's actually better for yourself a lot of, i've actually had people in the past that said they don't want to be tracked by google oh they already are <laughs> yeah it's too late it's too late you're born <laughs> you like cookies yeah exactly right um but you know it's, it's important yeah <laughs> um so do you uh how about this like do you have um do you have any like a tips or anything that you that you think are pertinent to the social media world in terms of like content creation kind of th yeah. um, tips on how to create engaging posts that people might be interested in learning more about? Definitely. I mean, I think that it's good to have a mix of uh, video and photos. I think that, you know, videos often drive a lot of engagement yeah. and, as well as photos, having that good mix. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it's about having a consistent posting schedule, not posting too much, not posting too little. Uh, you don't want to cannibalize your post, but you don't want to all, mm -hmm. you don't want to become irrelevant to your audiences. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's about finding your audience and and uh, community management, it's like actively and organically building out your following by by reaching out to people that you believe would be uh, interested in your product or service or brand. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that in terms of creative content, I think then it's also about creating engaging pieces that that focus your brand in, in a positive way or in an entertaining or fun way right. uh, depending on the scope of kind of what industry you're in uh you know if it's entertainment there's a, you can have a lot more fun with intellectual property of like mm. you know kind of hopping on trends but if you're more of like a serious b2b sort of thing like on linkedin then i would say it's more about like creating you know custom content there, whether it's like right. infographics or sharing relevant news about your company or about uh, happenings in the industry that, that you're mm -hmm. in. Right. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's, it's about having a good uh, kind of content mix and uh, as well as creating the just engaging visually pieces because mm -hmm. social media is a visual platform. Yep. Um, but uh, also I think having, and if it, there is a video component, I would say having some form of closed captions as well to, yes, uh, good. It, especially, it, I guess it depends on the medium, but being, you know, ADA com compliant or just ADA positive is definitely goes a long way. It's a small population, but um, I think it's helpful to just keep that in mind when you are designing content because there are people that are hard of hearing or deaf that, um, that would like to experience that content as well. And so there's different ways that they do that. Yeah, and also at that point too, um, Alex, is that if you, um, some social media um, will auto mute everything, but it doesn't mm -hmm. auto mute the captions. So yeah, the captions will be able to see, so you can almost see them as kind of like the ticker on the bottom if you don't even play it. So we'll get yeah. more people to engage with your stuff. Yep. Um, I love the video thing too. Um, it's it's one of the biggest things that I've, I mean, I've been saying it for so long, I'm tired of talking about it. 
Um, it's it, because video was the big thing 11 years ago. Right. Nine years ago. <laughs> yeah. Nine years ago. That thing called YouTube that started that, yeah, the Google bot. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's so funny too, because YouTube is, it's the second biggest search engine. I mean, it, 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 it truly is. And yeah. it's, it's really one of the places where a lot of people sleep on. And it's just because I think it's, it, it's a challenge if you are a very, spe- if you're a specific business to figure out how you can come up with engaging content on a regular consistent basis. Yep. And with what I say to that though, is kind of, um, obviously video is really important folks and you should be doing it all the time as much as you can. Um, but uh, for YouTube, YouTube advertising has a really, really great conversion rate. Um, and uh, you can actually utilize some of the video content that you've already created and other people's channel. Yeah. yeah. And it's, 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 it's pretty, um, it, there's, there's ways, there's tricks and tricks of the trade. So don't yeah. count yourself out, um, especially on YouTube, but also like TikTok and, um, and reels. And there's lots of things. I mean, for example, on Instagram, a lot of people are, um, they saw a drastic drop in engagement in the fourth quarter. And, um, and I was kind of seeing it too. And I was like, Oh God, what's happening. I thought these ideas were good. Um, (laughs) but it wasn't what they were doing is they changed their algorithm. Perfect timing. Yeah. Thank thank you. you. (laughs) I know, I know, I know who your dad is (laughs) Facebook, but, um, but no, uh, the, um, but yeah, they, uh, they're favoring, um, now multi-content. So if you're putting out reels, stories, and posts, yeah, they're gonna like you more. Yep. Yeah, you gotta utilize every aspect. You Instagram live, Instagram stories, reels, video, in feed posts, carousels. They'll be your best friends. Don't forget the highlights, you know, all that jazz. All the, all that jazz. All, all the different content. And like, this is kind of where where I think that there could be a misconception sometimes when it comes to social media that all I have to do is if you're talking to me about consistently posting. I'm going to post one post every two days on Instagram and wait for the money to roll in, baby. <laughs> and it's, it's no, no. It takes a little more, it takes a little bit more shenagling than that. Yes. A little bit more. And, a it, bit. <laughs> and, and, and that's, and that's kind of where you, you go a couple different routes. You can go and start boosting all those posts and doing ads on Instagram to make things better for you. Or you can come up with some varied content. And it, will they work exactly the same? Maybe not, but um, it's it, it, there's more to it than just a single post. And that's where like it, sometimes it, it, it's good to turn to an agency. Even like, for example, uh, you know, we were talking earlier, Alex and I about audits. Um, agencies will do an audit for you. And if it's, if it's not free, it'll be very inexpensive. That can be used towards your campaign um, mm-hmm. and fee. So it, it's almost worth doing that. It's just a friend telling you what they want. And if you respect the agency going in, they're going to give you a good analysis. Right. Um, yeah, because I, because I think day in, day out, you know, we, we know a thing or two about this. <laughs> yeah. And also I'm, I love, I'm a problem solver. I love trying to figure out what the issue is. And like, that is something that makes me joyful. So it's not, I mean, that's what we do. That's why we're doing this. You think it's like, wow, easy money. I mean, it's not. Easy money. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of yeah. work. But but we yeah, I do this because I love it, and you do this because you love it. And it's kind of following your. It's about following your passions. You know that's why that's why we're here. So yeah, exactly. And I think that's that's a really good piece of advice too. When you're looking for someone to work with or partner with, and you're kind of shopping around, if you don't feel that connection, you don't feel that passion, and you feel just kind of any sort of gut reaction that's negative, don't go with that that firm. Yeah. Don't. Always, yeah. Even if they have, even if they have, they're like, they, they drive a beautiful car and they have a beautiful website and they have a beautiful roster of clients. Um, yeah, you have to like them. You're going to be working with them and they're going to be carrying your reputation. So it's really good to be able to kind of have the right feeling um, when you're working with them initially. I agree. All right. Well, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people learn more about um, your agency? What was the question? Sorry. Oh, where can people learn more about your agency? Oh, sure. So you can learn more about Del Oro Media uh, at deloromedia.com or follow us on any of the social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. We're there, deloromedia.com. Yep. And all, and all those links um, for, for Alex's um, company and uh, social 
will be in the description of this show. So please take a look at it. Um, it will also be on our YouTube video. So check it out um, as well as all of my links. Um, so uh, that is all for today's episode of the Social Marketing Academy. If you have missed any other shows for you, you're missing out on tons of good stuff, but um, you can always look at the archives and listen on demand. Um, or watch on demand on our YouTube channel or through Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Stitcher, et cetera, et cetera, ad nauseum. Um, also check out um, the Go Agency's blog, gosalesandmarketing.com. If you go check us out there, click on the blog page and there's lots of really great information that can maybe help level up your business um, this year, give you some new ideas, fresh perspective, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Um, check out, click on the uh, social media links in the top right hand corner. Um, that will help you connect with us so you can ask questions. Um, we have some great topics coming up in the next few weeks. We have some more, um, some more of my PR experts in my expert network, as well as some SEO, um, some SEO experts, website design experts, and more. So please check us out in the Social Marketing Academy. Until next time, I'm Christopher Tompkins, and I'll see you around.